red. It's returned. My new living room light. Via Matrix. So, okay, at one level, oh wow, it's changing the pixels on an Adafruit thing. But the really, really cool thing is that he could have been typing that from anywhere. He chose an old version of Vector, but it could equally well be an SMS coming hey, in. Oh, hello, bye-bye. Um, <laughs> um, or anything else um, like that. Another thing he's gone done is... Let me find it. Where's it gone? Oh, interesting. Somebody in here taking photos. <laughs> Thank you. So, so that's a Slack view, for instance, of one of the Matrix rooms as an example of how things... Um, Gets um, federated together. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, God, we're in an inception feedback loop now. <laughs> um, either way, um, so yeah, look, distraction into Slack and Matrix integration. I was trying to talk about Ryan and um, his crazy body suit that he's built. Um, so, uh, he's built a body computing platform, again on top of Matrix, which involves strapping a lot of Raspberry Pis to his body <coughs> in different places and hooking them up to different webcams and sensors. Um, and in fact, it was Matrix which sort of inspired him to um, get going on this again. He had just discovered it, and you can see him there with a Raspberry Pi around his neck and a battery pack and the various different sensors and things. But a couple of months later, he posted uh, another um, post here, um, if we quickly grab the matrix, um, his, the, the whole point here is that he's taking images from different devices, pushing them into a matrix room, which is federated between the servers and the suit, and you know, pondering them. Using matrix for the data fabric is looking smarter and smarter, community spec tooling great. Lots of propaganda, it wasn't written by anybody on the team, made me happy. So if you want to know about what Ryan's doing, read the rest of that blog. Um, where was I? Random thing with Coac. Has anybody played with Coac? Fuck me. I had a Coac demo this morning. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Coac is, is cool. It's um, very similar to HTTP, but runs over UDP, and uh, there isn't a dedicated server and client, so it's more peer to peer. So you can do get style operations on anybody, and anybody can do get style operations on you. And it's really nice for Matrix um, because you can just go and take a JSON Matrix event, event like saying hello and go and in this instance you do a Perl one minor to turn it from JSON into Seabor um, and put it into a cart client to a URL that maps straight through to Matrix. So for everybody who complains about Matrix being HTTP, this is a great example of a nice binary tight encoding of CARP and Seabor mapping straight through into it. End-to-end um, -end encryption is something that is intended to be in the baseline of Matrix. It's not quite there yet. What we've done is to implement our own Axolotl-style ratchet called OLM. Um, this is written in C++11, and it's Apache licensed. Um, Axolotl is what um, WhatsApp and TechSecure, nowadays known as Signal, and a bunch of other solutions um, use for a incremental cryptographic ratchet. Our implementation is amazing and lovely and wonderful, other than the fact that we haven't yet wired it into Matrix. But when we do, any matrix client will have the ability to have full end-to-end -end encryption in there. The only thing that's blocking it is working out the key management semantics and honestly having time because we've spent a lot more time making glossy matrix apps than um, doing the end-to-end. -end. But it's coming up real soon now. And the end goal on all of this is that you have matrix as this big meta network and you've got all of the different IoT vendors and say you want to do a visualization thing or an orchestration thing or data analytics or whatever the hell you want to do on your IoT data, you just have this big pool out there decentralized on the web that you can sit on top of and do stuff with. Uh, what's left? End to end, we need to build more bridges, need to do group ACLs. Um, decentralized identity and abuse of education is a big open area of research and matrix because if you do bridge everything together, then Worst case, you've produced a simple HTTP API that anybody can use to contact anybody on any platform anywhere. So you really need to have the anti-spam and anti-phishing kind of <coughs> reputation semantics nailed down. And that's where a lot of our effort is going to be going in the next couple of months. We need help in many ways, clearly, including better drones. Um, <laughs> we really need people to um, get involved. We're still in beta. There are bugs, as we've seen. but. Um, if you're interested, please run a server and federate up. 
Um, writing gateways to existing stuff is really easy. It's a really, really simple HTTP API. I mean, the Slack bridge, for instance, that we briefly looked at earlier um, in some tab somewhere here, this is like 100 lines of note talking with the Slack webhooks on one side, matrix webhooks on the other, and they pretty much glue straight to each other. It's really, really easy to glue things in like that. And we could really deal with some help from the community in building it, especially in the IoT <coughs> domain. Um, tell us how it sucks. If you're building a new solution, you know, if you're a Shenzhen sensor manufacturer, don't invent a new HTTP API. You know, if you're just sending a blob of JSON from your thermometer to a cloud service, why not use an existing API rather than going and creating yet another random thing? Um, and so, yeah, if you follow us on Twitter, you'll see um, examples of me trying to cut my fingers off with drones. Any questions? Oh, I must be something. Hello. Uh, can you give the microphone to Oh, the sorry, sorry. Have a <coughs> So for, one, and for a room, so I mean we call it a room, but it could be representing, sorry, it could be representing um, uh, chat users or devices or whatever. That room is replicated as much as is needed over the participants. So you can expire history from servers which don't care about it. So if one of those servers is running client side or it's running on a Raspberry Pi or whatever, then keep the last 10 events. If another server participating in the room is sitting in the cloud with terabytes of disk space, then it can be the kind of backup store of everything. And in terms of the actual stores, it depends on the server. So we have um, two official servers at the moment, one called Synapse, which is written in Python and Twisted, and has a SQLite and the Postgres backend, depending on whether you want it to be easy to admin or fast. Um, and then there's Dendron, which is our next generation server which is probably going to be Postgres as well, but we, at the moment we're using the same Synapse thing. But there are four other servers from the community which um, use a mix of Postgres and different, I can't actually remember what the storage engines they use. Because it's a standard, I mean, there are probably 30 different chat clients out there, um, about 20 different bridges and about five different servers right now. It's entirely, it's entirely up to the administrator to define a retention policy and how often they want to chuck stuff out. Um, but the lovely thing is uh, so, no, they could choose to destroy all of it and you then go and load it back in on demand. So if I ever get a message and it has a pointer to the previous message in the graph and I don't know what that message is, I will go and ask all the other servers in the room, hey guys, where's this message from? And therefore you backfill any um, gaps in the graph. Any other questions? Um, cool. Sir. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask whether you have uh, some libraries for Android, and in particular that handles out-of-network situations and uh, it tells you to resend data. Yep. Yeah. So we provide official SDKs for JavaScript, Android, and iOS, and all of them support offline operation as just basic. Uh, requirements that all of them have a modular architecture where you have a different local store. By default, they use an in-memory store, but the JavaScript one could also use HTML5 local storage, for instance, and the Android one can use SQLite to go and persist the messages which are queuing up ready to be sent when you get your connectivity back. So you have both the um, incremental sync from the client to the server, as well as then this eventual sync between the servers. And uh, for Windows of Doubt, you respond to network events on Android and you don't hold the wake lock? Oh yeah, no, we do not hold. Excellent. <laughs> we don't hold the wake lock. Um, but other than in some situation with video calls where we do take a wake lock, and I forget what it is, but it's to stop the screen falling asleep when you're on the call. Okay. Okay. Which is probably a good reason to use a wake lock. <laughs> so there's another question over there. <coughs> Uh, yes. Right, sorry. 
not that I know. Um, um, so on this, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of Formula Open Hub. We try to track all the things the community is doing. Um, but like any open source project, you got half the people who are really excited about the thing they're building and they hang out in the chat rooms and tell everybody about it. And the other half sometimes work for big companies. So for instance, we discovered that Ericsson had been building matrix servers and clients for months without anybody knowing, and then suddenly... Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I recommend you to talk about that. Honestly, we haven't had that much um, scope other than doing um, drone stuff to work on the IoT side and something that would be really cool for the community to play with and do bridges to zero. So a big round of applause.